How's it going everybody? So it's time, we have reached the season finale of season 3 of Chucky, and it is bittersweet because I have enjoyed this show so much, talking about it each and every week with you guys, but all good things must come to an end, and this finale is a pretty wild conclusion. There's a whole lot of big surprises across every single storyline, and a big ending that I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be in shambles about as we go into a potential season 4, or even into Don Mancini's movie he's working on. We'll speculate a little bit about that towards the end of the video. Considering how we left things off in episode 7, the finale, the nerves are pretty high immediately going in with Jake and Tiffany both potentially dying, along with the possibility if they would be bold enough to actually kill both of them. Much like in other instances, we've seen it kind of become a trope now when it comes to Tiffany. Just right when it seems like she's finally going to die, she gets saved at the last minute. We literally saw this at the very end of last season. And once again, just when it seemed like Tiffany was going to die this time, she's rescued by one of the guards bursting in and shooting up the place, much to everyone's horror and anger, especially Nika. I gotta admit though, this entire section revolving around Tiffany's storyline is just completely wild and bonkers. The large scale shootout that breaks out trying to get Tiffany out of prison. All the different prisoners taking part in the riot, killing guards. Despite seeing an entire storyline in episode 7 revolving around the problem the sniper outside poses, it didn't really feel like it seemed to be a big enough problem actually after all. I mean, I guess he was still a pretty big obstacle. He kills the guard that Tiffany was being protected by. Literally right after this he gets shot to death so it didn't seem like it was that much of an inconvenience after all. In situations like this I feel so horrible for Nika after everything that she's endured. In her eyes it seemed like there was no possible way that Tiffany could get out of this and she does in the last second. That's really trying her hardest to chase her as she's trying to get out of prison. Coming up just short having to watch Tiffany drive away in her car after she falls out of her wheelchair. Now I don't know why nobody thought it was kind of suspicious that Tiffany's car was parked right outside the prison but uh uh, we're just gonna go with it, I guess. Shifting over into Jake's journey now that he's temporarily dead, navigating through the spirit realm, it's a pretty surreal supernatural element to the story. Much like some of the other episodes in part two, it does take a little bit of getting used to the supernatural elements at play. Kind of similar to the way that we saw Chucky try and navigate the spirit realm when he got there, there was a lot of uncertainty on who exactly is Jake even going to see in the spirit realm along this journey, and he doesn't have a lot of time. He only has a couple minutes to get this all done, but time doesn't really work the same exact way in the spirit realm. As if the situation wasn't already bad enough that Jake has to go into the spirit realm and take on who knows what adversaries along the way, he immediately has to deal with his father the moment he gets there. This is definitely not one I was hoping he would have a reunion with. Instantly we're hit with the reminder of how awful he was destroying Jake's art pieces back in season 1. Other than probably Chucky, this is probably the worst possible person he could encounter in the spirit realm because of how horribly abusive, homophobic, and antagonistic he was towards Jake. Despite that however, this interaction between Jake and his father as I think is a good indicator on how much Jake has matured between season one and now. Diffusing this conversation in a way and trying to navigate through that trauma he has with his father and working through his personal demons, telling him that he forgives him and even hugs him before moving on. One major detail I found so fascinating about the spirit realm and how it works and how it makes Chucky more powerful is the spirit realm kind of makes him a mixture between Freddy Krueger and Doctor Strange. So essentially in the spirit realm he's immortal because you can't die if you're already dead. And you see the visuals of him going and fixing Jake's sculpture felt very reminiscent of something you would see Doctor Strange do in the MCU. These conversations between Jake and Chucky are some of the most intriguing elements to the finale, as it gives us insight between Jake and Chucky, who used to have a much closer connection than they do now. We're still seeing, despite them kind of waning in years, there's some level of connection. One of the cooler details to Jake and Chucky navigating through the spirit realm is when Chucky takes Jake to the dollhouse this theater inside the spirit realm that kind of gives us the greatest hits of the Chucky franchise, different kills throughout the years. On top of getting to see the various different eras of Chucky, the Colonel, Buff Chucky, Good Chucky, Fiona Dorf dressed up like Charles Lee Ray from the 1980s that Brad Dorf is supposed to look like, but he isn't. I know it's only temporary, but sequences like this truly hammer home just how exceptional of an actor Brad Dorf is. I'm always going to love his performance even just doing the voice as Chucky. It continues to be one of the best parts about the series. But I think he's equally as captivating when you do see him actually actually on screen, telling Jake that he admires his efforts, but there's not much he really can do to save everybody. Something we've seen a lot before in the franchise pops back up here, and that's the fact that Chucky just can't really get along with anybody, even himself. You would think maybe because they're all kind of the same person, they would get along, but they don't get along at all. That in of itself is hilarious, but it's also really cool when you realize that it's Fiona Dorof and Brad acting in the same scene together as the same character. I think this might actually be the first time we've ever 
ever seen them share scenes together in a project. I could be wrong. Still, nevertheless, it's an awesome thing to see as a fan of the franchise. Earlier, I mentioned it, and the episode even hammers it home when we cut back to Devin and Lexi in the White House here and there, but the whole fact that Spirit Realm time and Earth Realm time, uh, they work a little bit differently, I think it's kind of BS. Personally, I feel like enough time has passed where it should have been four to five minutes, but we're still going along for the adventure. Jake finally goes and confronts Good Chucky in his adorable room. A lot of neat details are scattered across this room. There's a picture of Jake on the one nightstand, and then on the other, we have one of poor Nadine, RIP. I still miss that character dearly. And because of that, I'd have a hard time forgiving Good Chucky still to this day. Finally, after all this time, we start getting some answers on where exactly Caroline has been this entire season. Good Chucky tells Jake that she's with Grandpa Wendell, who's a character we're definitely going to come back to. It's John Waters, by the way. This entire section of the episode, this conversation between Jake and Good Chucky, is extremely wild when you think about the context of the scene. Good Chucky feeling so much remorse for what he did to Nadine, having to live with that trauma. With Jake kind of understanding why he feels that way, and then telling Good Chucky to kill himself. A bit of an odd situation to put somebody in to have them kill themselves to make everything right. This entire section kind of ends up being a moot point regardless, even when all the different Chuckies show up to antagonize Jake. Immediately letting on that this was all just a ruse. That part of it wasn't the part that surprised me, it's the aftermath of that, because Chucky is going to take Jake's body, pulling a move right out of the first Insidious film. Their entire goal was to distract Jake long enough that Chucky can go and possess Jake's body and come back to the real world that way. Thought of Chucky possessing Jake's body is already horrifying enough, and then they go and double down on that horror. Possibly one of the most WTF moments of the entire franchise. Witnessing from Jake's POV, Devin giving Jake CPR. Ending the scene with Devin and Chucky having this big kiss. Definitely a makeout I didn't see coming, though I did try to warn people about it, so anyone who's watching this that I tried to warn, uh, I'm very curious how you felt about the sequence. It did kind of bother me that this entire section, nobody was suspicious at all that Jake was acting weird the moment he popped back up from being dead. Some of it at first, I guess, could be attributed to the situation at hand, that they're not thinking 100% clearly. But we'll see as the episode goes on, he continues to act weirder and weirder. They have no suspicions that anything is up. Chucky possessing Jake's body is certainly interesting. It's kind of sick and twisted seeing him beat Timmy to death in the elevator in this over-the-top jarring fashion. That's on top of Jake doing this Chucky impression while he's doing it. Not a half bad impression, though. Zachary Arthur, I think, did a pretty good job trying his best to emulate Charles's voice. Another odd wrinkle I forgot to mention until now is while Jake is in the spirit realm and Devin, Lexi, and them are watching over his body, Price kind of just decided to plant explosives all around the White House to blow it up. I think it's kind of absurd he decided to just blow up the White House after everything that's happened to, I guess, get rid of all the evidence. Personally, I'd kind of love to know what the average person is thinking right now after hearing about the tragedy that happened at the Halloween party. Eventually, they're going to find out that the president's dead, the vice president's dead, the press secretary. And the cherry on top of that is the White House burning down in an explosion. Like, could you imagine the hysteria in the world if that happened in real life? But going back to the White House burning down, they had to pack in some last minute heartbreak. Having to see Hicks die, but before he does, giving Grant the keys. After this sad moment, though, it was one of the scenes I was waiting for the entire season, and that was Price getting his comeuppance. I wasn't sure who was going to take out Price. Honestly, anybody in the show would have done it. I would have been their biggest fan, but Grant being the one to do it, I think, makes the most sense. Chucky definitely played a big part in ruining Grant's life, but Price also played a big part in that as well. So it was extremely satisfying watching Grant hit him with a chair, then locking him inside the room. I wasn't expecting, however, the moment that Price unlocks the one door, a bunch of the ghosts of the presidents run out. Still, nevertheless, it brought me a lot of joy watching Golfed in Flames before he dies, a very painful, fiery death. On top of that, we get a really cool shot of Grant outside of the White House, looking inside of the window, seeing his father and Joseph. It reminded me a lot of the final shot that we saw back in Mike Flanagan's Oculus. If you haven't seen Oculus, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite underrated Mike Flanagan films. Also, for all the Charlotte fans out there, it was nice to see Charlotte just in one small scene outside hugging Grant. Though by now, with this reunion with Jake, with the rest of the group, still, it frustrates me how nobody realizes that Jake is acting completely weird owing to Wendell Wilkins' spooky house in hopes of finding Caroline, where we're introduced properly to Wendell Wilkins, played by John Waters, who, much like a lot of other actors in the franchise is playing a brand new character. We saw him die in Seed of Chucky. Now he's playing the creator of the good guy dolls. In usual John Waters fashion, which I personally appreciate, he's camping it up with this performance. While we learn a little bit about Wendell Wilkins' past while touring this creepy 
house with all of his different doll creations scattered about. Of course, the most famous one of all, though, is the good guy doll. We even get to see he has the original good guy doll after all these years locked away in a case. Maybe this is just me or the way that John Waters plays the character, but from the moment that John Waters is on screen, it felt kind of obvious to me that this man was evil in some shape or form. How finally they realize that it's been Chucky and Jake's body this entire time, which I was ready to put my head through a wall that nobody realized that to this point. As nice as it would be ideal-wise that Lexi would finally get Caroline back on their side, I think after this exchange, I think it's safe to say it's kind of just a lost cause at this point. Shockingly, in all the time she's spent off screen has been learning a whole lot about voodoo to the point where it seems like she's kind of better at it than both Chucky and Tiffany, to the point where she's able to do a lot of incantations on her own with ease, like swapping Jake and Chucky back into their own bodies. It's kind of a shame just how much this climax is going to shake fans to their core, especially with how many big things are left open-ended for the future of the franchise. Firstly, the fact that Chucky now is back in a good guy doll, the original good guy doll of all things. And that's not all though. Following this, Tiffany shows up to Wendell's house as well, deciding after everything to reunite with Chucky and transferring her soul back into a Tiffany doll. And we see with Caroline driving the car that Tiffany and Chucky are now a couple again, both in their respective dolls. So that's going to be really interesting to see where we go with a potential season four and or the movie that Don Mancini is planning. That isn't all though, as far as things in this climax, I think are going to have fans in shambles. Because we get to see Nika again because she tracked Tiffany's car to Wendell's house. When she goes inside though, that's when the true horror is on display. Through her, we get the reveal that Jake, Devin, and Lexi have been turned into dolls by Caroline, ending with hearing her scream while Wendell sneaks up behind her with a gun. What an insane, baffling way to conclude things. Not just for the trio, because we don't know if they're ever going to be saved now that they're dolls. Who potentially could save them, with Nika also hanging in the balance? If I had to predict, the only way I could see them getting out of this is if Andy and Kyle find out about it, and then they have to go and rescue them from Wendell's house. It's certainly something interesting to speculate about, because we have no idea if Andy and Kyle are going to be popping back up in the story ever again because it seemed like their last time they were on screen in season two they kind of had a happy ending but we've seen happy endings get ruined by Chucky before in the franchise the big question at hand however is it going to be in the companion movie Don Mancini is writing or are they going to actually get a season four it seems like to me it's at a crossroads on what they could do with the franchise going forward if they do want to have a season four it could be about rescuing the trio from being dolls or in a movie that I think some people could not be a fan of or even be a fan of I guess depending on how you feel about the trio we could move away from them entirely and kind of reset things and have a new thing going on much like with season one of Chucky and that's besides the fact that Chucky has a whole campaign at the tail end of the episode recapping everything trying to get a fourth term aka a fourth season of the show where do you think the franchise is going to go after this if you do want a season four do you want to continue on from this story or do you kind of want a soft reboot of sorts where Chucky and Tiffany and Caroline and them kind of go somewhere else terrorize other people maybe throw in some legacy characters either way show your thoughts down below because part of the fun is that conversation with you guys in the comment section thank you guys as always for checking out the videos i always do appreciate it especially these chucky reviews as they've been a lot of fun to cover with you guys all the big chucky fans out there make sure you like on the video and also subscribe though so you're up to date reviews reactions unboxings and more for the next time i'll see you guys later